<laughs> Friday, March 22nd, John Arvosa here. How's everybody doing? Hey guys, um, we have an incredibly busy news day, or it got very busy. Not a ton of stories, but some big stories, so we're gonna be talking a lot about that. Um, let me get my TikTok rolling here. Uh, go live, I think, yes, that's good. All right, TikTok go live. Woo, busy, busy, busy today. Here we go, hang on, Zoom. mirror video, there we go, all right. We are here, hey y'all, how's everybody doing? We are good today, checking out the comments. Yep, you're all here, yep, terrorist attack in Russia. Um, lots of, that's the big story, which we will talk about, but lots of, lots of news otherwise, in any case. Hey, TikTok, welcome TikTokers as well. Hmm, ah, oh, oh boy. Yes, we will talk about what we think of the big terrorist attack in Moscow today, that's the big story. Also, um, other news, which is a little annoying about President Biden and Ukraine, something I'm not very happy about. So what else is new? Um, hey, guys, on TikTok, looking at the comments here. Just so, I mean, people who are new may not know, the reason you always see me looking down is because I'm actually trying to read your comments. <laughs> so for you guys on YouTube, your comments are down there. For you guys on TikTok, your comments are down there. So a lot of my show is going like this. And I was watching it myself last night and I realized that looked a little low. Oh, there we go. Yep, I had not turned up the sound. The sound is now up, up to normal. There we go. Sound is now on normal. Um, anyway, hey guys, so welcome. We've got a lot of news today. Let me move this over. There we go. Um, nope, volume's adjusting itself, don't worry. Hey John, hey Starry. So, all right, guys, let's get rolling here. There is a ton of news today. Um, as always, uh, please do keep the gifts coming. Thank you, Martin. Uh, your gifts help me pay the bills. I do this full time. Uh, TikTok and YouTube both. Uh, not kidding. Your gifts really do make the difference of me being able to do this or not. So please keep them coming. Uh, the microphone's adjusting itself. It's done, guys. Whoever else comments about the microphones, if the rest of you could please just jump in and let them know it's been changed. Yeah. It's already been fixed. Um, thank you, Al, for the bunny ears. All right, guys, so uh, let's get rolling. So today is day 756 of Vladimir Putin's special three-day military operation. Uh, tomorrow, I've got my coffee talk for all the monthly subscribers. That's the folks on YouTube and the folks on TikTok who have signed up as monthly supporters, uh, whether it's memberships or subscriptions. Join me tomorrow morning on TikTok. Uh, you will find me on TikTok itself at 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S. on YouTube. You could either find me on YouTube, which we're going to try this, this weekend just for fun, I will try streaming directly to YouTube just for subscribers, but otherwise the default, I am always streaming to Discord. Discord is where typically we do all the other subscribers. Um, so make sure if you've got an account now, a membership on YouTube that you go over to Discord, set up your account there. Um, and then you gotta go to settings on Discord and link your YouTube account. But otherwise I will try to do it from here, but uh, both times are 11 a.m. Eastern time US. So guys, please do uh, try to show up and let's keep going. Um, and uh, as I said, please do keep the gifts coming. The subscriptions especially help me a lot on tick on YouTube, on TikTok. Um, you can do gift subscriptions on YouTube. You can't do them on TikTok yet. And you know, that would be something really cool for TikTok to come up with. But on YouTube, you can actually buy subscriptions for other people in the audience. Uh, just go to the subscriptions tab. It should be the little dollar sign or something at the bottom of your screen and look for gift subscriptions and you can buy, basically it's one month subscription. And you can buy as many as you want, and then the computer will automatically give them to people in the audience, which means they can join our show tomorrow. Um, they get access to the VIP auctions, all sorts of fun things. The emojis, and you get the joy of knowing you helped me out. You can gift subs on Bry Bryce. I did not know that. You can gift subscriptions on TikTok as well. Oh, okay. But you've got to actually, I guess, what do you do? You buy them and then have to email the person to let them know. Thank you, Ellie. Appreciate that. Thank you, Ava. Okay, interesting. I didn't. Okay, good. I did not know that. That's good. That's good. Now, one thing that's nice on YouTube is you can buy them, and then the U YouTube will literally give them to people in the audience, and it sort of figures out by an algorithm, like who's being more. I think it's who's being more chatty or something like that. It's random. Oh, that's good. Oh, I didn't. Okay, TikTok. What do you know? Good for TikTok. Okay, did not know TikTok does that. So after, so definitely consider doing that on TikTok too, guys, if you can. Um, Annette, I'm unable to do coffee chat on my phone on Discord. Can only use PC? Mm, no. Shouldn't be any reason why. Um, I, I know there are some weird things on some services with, with, 
PC. I don't know if anybody else on Discord knows. What kind of phone do you have? If you have an iPhone, it should work. I mean, I think I've even done it on my iPad myself, even. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mods, help her out if you can, just to make sure, helping that out. All right, guys. Yep, and Coach Brandy says, works fine on my phone with an Android. So yeah, there, uh, you must be having something wrong with the setup on your phone, unfortunately, Annette. Sorry, maybe somebody else can help you out. All right, guys, let's get rolling. So the big story today, big terror attack in Moscow today. Um, very weird story. Uh, so earlier today, maybe four hours ago or so, four or five, this is what we know, four or five people in camouflage uniforms go into a shopping mall in Moscow. Uh, they are carrying automatic assault weapons, AK-style weapons. They open fire on people shopping in the mall, just murdering everybody. I mean, just openly, you know, women, children, you name it. Um, the, the building also was housing a concert that was about to take place, a 6,000 uh, capacity concert hall filled with people. Um, thank you, Chad, for the gift. Uh, 6,000 people, concert hall, concert hall filled with people, so it could have been several thousand people, and they're just opening fire. Now, there were uh, videos on social media all over Russia showing this. I mean, it was pretty gruesome. It was pretty gruesome. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> I, I like those. Um, really gruesome stuff. Uh, you know, people obviously lying wounded. You, you get it. I mean, the, the videos. Um, it took the Russian uh, state a good hour to sort of intervene. I was just hearing on CNN that was probably a good thing in some ways because uh, historically, thank you, Simon, the Russians have been really bad at this. Um, the 2002, remember back in 2002 when uh, they took over that theater? I think it might have been Chechen rebels at that point, but they took over the, the theater in Moscow and the police stormed, and there were like hundreds of people held hostage. The police stormed the theater and ended up killing, I don't know if they killed a hundred and some of the, of the actual patrons. I mean, it was crazy. Thank you, Crazy American. Thank you, Simon, Dora. Um, the Russian, and then there was another, there was another terrorist attack several years later, I'm forgetting which one, where the same thing happened. And this time, the Russian authorities killed like several, I think 300 civilians they killed. They got killed by storming the place and not knowing what they were doing. Thank you, adventurers. So in other words, the Russians do not actually have a very good SWAT capability of going in and dealing with these kind of terrorist attacks. So in fact, it may have actually saved the lives of a lot of these people because there were reportedly several hundred people still inside, uh, you know, just in the last hour or two. In any case, um, we, I'm just looking here. I mean, there's a lot of information. Um, Islamic State is now claiming credit. Whether that's true, who knows? Uh, a Telegram channel belonging to Islamic State claimed credit for the attack. Interestingly, you may remember, okay, so Russian elections were last weekend, the presidential elections. You may remember that the U.S. Embassy and the British Embassy both warned uh, the Russians, and actually everybody publicly, that, oh, I didn't, well, okay, we'll see how this goes. The sun's coming in, but hopefully it's not a problem. Let's see if it, if it gets to be too blinding. I can try to shut the curtains, but actually, you know what? I'm going to put up my, I've got at least a, a cloth I can put up to block the sun really quick. Hang on. Thank you, Pilar. Who else have the bunny ears? Thank you, Marie. I'm going to put up the, because uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't sunny a second ago, so I didn't need my little, uh, my little block here. But, doop, one second. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Hopefully, there we go. Very low tech, but it worked. There we go. Oh, and thank you. Who get the hat? Marie. See, very low tech, but it works. So at least it's blocking the sun from hitting us directly. So that's good. I like sunshine too, but sometimes it can it can blind you if it hits sort of the camera directly, or it gives me a, a, a an angelic you know glow, which I don't object to. Um, thank you, L, for the hands, and thank you, Tigger and Marie. We just said so. Um, yeah, so Islamic State. So the U.S. puts out a warning two weeks ago. The Brits do as well. Listen to the warning that the Brits and the U.S. put out there. Okay, thank you, Martin. Um, the embassy is monitoring reports that extremists have imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow to include concerts. They specifically said concerts, which is the fascinating thing. Um, and U.S. citizens should be advised to avoid large gatherings. This was two weeks ago. In response, Putin three days ago put out a statement attacking the U.S. and attacking the Brits for suggesting the possibility of a terror attack in Moscow. 
Let me pull this up. Listen to this from Putin. Three days ago, guys. I, I mean, he really screwed this one up. The recent provocative statements of a number of official Western structures about the possibility of terrorist attacks in Russia. Um, all this... Um, he called, what did he call it? He called them blackmail. He called them blackmail, what, what the West was saying about the possibility of attacks. All this resembles, here we go, all this resembles outright blackmail and the intention to intimidate and destabilize our society. The problem is the attacks happened. Now, previously, um, thank you, Courtney. Um, previously, U.S. intelligence of a couple months ago had intelligence that ISIS, Islamic State, was wanting to hit Moscow was wanting to hit the Russians. Um, we do not know as of uh, the last as the last hour or so, thank you, Cuevas, we do not know if the, we don't know a couple things, okay? Thank you, Russell. We don't know if the U.S. terror warning or the British one from two weeks ago was about ISIS. We don't know. We know ISIS previously, we had reports, thank you, Joker, of ISIS wanting to hit the Russians, right? But we don't know if the, if the warning from two weeks ago was ISIS. Thank you, Cuevas. Um, we also don't know if the attack today was the same warning, well, basically was tied to the warning we got two weeks ago. So we don't know. Clearly, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? There were warnings. Um, Putin, just because he dismissed the warnings publicly doesn't mean he dismissed them privately. Who knows? But in any case, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention. So, okay, we're trying to figure out like what caused, like what's going on here, right? Let me get a sip of water here. And please keep the gifts coming, guys. All right? I need those need those gifts on TikTok and YouTube both to keep the show going. I mean, I will do the show anyway, but quite literally, I can't pay the bills. <laughs> so please, thank you, Tigger. Um, and like I said, we definitely the subscriptions are a wonderful idea if you can afford them. Thank you, Nicholas. So there are many possibilities as to what's going on here, okay? Thank you for peace. It could be ISIS, aka a legitimate terrorist attack, okay? Um, B, it could be a false flag. Thank you, Luis. I am not convinced it's a false flag. Um, uh, a false flag basically means a fake attack, not a fake attack. Thank you, Adam. A false flag is where, okay, in this situation, Putin stages the attack, blames someone else, like the Ukrainians, and does it um, thank you, Al, and does it in order to basically make the Ukrainians look bad or justify some attack he's planning. Thank you, Ellie. That would be a false flag. So in other words, he flags the attack as a reason for going after the Ukrainians in some updated, uh, bigger way. Thank you, Firewoods. Whereas it could have been Putin. I don't necessarily think it was Putin. Um, uh, there is, however, precedent for this. We know for a fact um, thank you, Succeed. I shouldn't say for a fact. We know that the Russians blew up a uh, Ukrainian prisoners of war back in like 2002 in eastern Ukraine. Um, even the United Nations investigated and said it wasn't Ukraine, right? <laughs> you know, they were, they were in the care of the Russians. The Russians blew up the prison. What did the Russians do? Thank you, Martin. The Russians turned around and tried to blame it on NATO, blame it on the Ukrainians, blame it on the HIMARS, this kind of stuff. Go all the way back to, actually, and we just had the death, remember, three, four weeks ago, the Ukrainian, thank you, Firewoods, remember three, four weeks ago, the um, Ukrainian uh, attack on a Russian cargo plane that was right across the border in Russia, and it's a plane that has been carrying weapons throughout the war, thank you, uh, SR Ginger, um, carrying weapons throughout the war, and this time the Russians say, oh, that plane that always carries weapons this time was carrying Ukrainian prisoners of war and you just killed them all. You just killed 65 Ukrainian prisoners of war. We have no reason to believe that's true. It's now been, what, over a month? The Russians, I think it could have been six weeks now. The Russians have offered no proof. And let's face it, if Ukraine killed 65 of its own men, Russia would be loving it. Russia would, Russia would have cameras on the scene, right, showing you gruesome pictures. I mean, it would be a propaganda victory extraordinaire for the Russians that the Ukrainians killed their own, right? Because it would hurt morale at home, this kind of thing, right? He would call the Ukrainians murderers. He would do this kind of stuff, right? Thank you, Tom. Putin did none of that. He's offered zero proof of these 65 dead, right? Thank you, adventurers. So I, I, I cry foul on that, right? Uh, thank you, R19. So that, that as well could be another false flag, potentially. 
the most important one that everybody points to is 1999. There were a series of, and thank you, R19, I think I just thanked you. There were a series of uh, bombings of apartment buildings around Russia. I think there were four or five attacks, five of them maybe, two of them were in Moscow. Um, big apartment buildings bombed, several hundred people killed, and it happened right before the presidential elections. Putin was prime minister, but the, the attacks and Putin's response to the attacks let him show he was a strong man and it, it helped propel him to victory. And we all know once Putin got elected president, he never left. This is 24 years ago, right? He's still president. It is widely believed, but not proven, that Putin was behind the attacks, that he did them. It, they were not Chechen rebels. Putin actually did the attacks to try to you know, rally the troops. I put it out there because I am not a believer in conspiracy theories. Um, I do not necessarily believe that this was a false flag attack, that Putin was behind it. The Ukrainians have already put out a statement claiming the Russians were behind the attack today, actually. Um, I don't know if I believe that, but let me put it this way. Do I believe, thank you, Dark Phoenix, do I believe that Putin would do an attack like this? Oh yeah, absolutely. Do I think he did this attack? I don't know. I don't know. And I, I think it's important to, you know, it's important for us to be sort of honest about stuff like that. You know what I mean? We don't just blame the bad guys of everything, even though we don't know, right? Um, in any case, so, you know, second option, you, the Russians are saying, you know, Medvedev, who's the former prime minister, who's really like, ooh, ooh, you know, I mean, he's a little crazy. He's claiming the Ukrainians did it and saying, you know, that the Russians will kill all the Ukrainian heads of state, you know, every, all the leaders of the country if they did this. Um, I, you know, thank you, Yorid. I am not convinced the Ukrainians did this. Thank you, adventurers. I don't quite see how it benefits them, right? I mean, a terror attack in Moscow, what does it get them? I, I'm, and by going in, by going in and opening fire, you're pretty much doing it as a suicide attack because you know in the end you're probably going to get killed. I don't see Ukraine using its own people to do that. Um, again, it sounds like Middle Eastern terrorists. It sounds like ISIS, which did take credit um, and which the U.S. has warned previously was a threat to, to Moscow. Um, let me look a little more here. Um, now, one more weird thing, one more weird thing. But CIA doesn't have a reason either. Crime Wave is saying CIA. But again, why? What benefit does it get? It doesn't get us any benefit doing a terror attack in Moscow. Yeah. I mean, it just, there's no, there's no benefit to it. Um, CIA is, I mean, I love the CIA. CIA is smart. They're not going to do something. And by the way, if the CIA does it, it means Biden did it. Biden, Biden, we're about, I'm about to tell you a story of Biden once again being such a chicken when it comes to standing up to Russia. Biden, <laughs> Biden won't even give Ukraine the weapons it needs. That's how bad things are with Biden. You think Biden's going to turn around and say, hey, we're really afraid of giving Ukraine the weapons it, le it needs, including the attack arms, but, 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 but we're going to go ahead and, and you know, blow up a, a, a concert hall and open fire. There's Biden? Biden? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I, don't even, I don't even think I need to prove this one. Joe Biden is not your profile in terror courage, okay? The guy who, who would launch terrorists at Joe Biden? No, not even close. Um, one sort of weird thing that did happen today, uh, just before the attack, the Russians finally started referring today to the war in Ukraine as a war. And Kremlin spokesperson uh, Dmitry Peskov said the conflict had become a war because of the involvement of the West. OK, now that's interesting to me because the Russians are always looking for ways to escalate this stuff. Right. They're always looking for ways not to escalate. They're looking for ways to scare us. They're looking for ways to basically scare Biden into thinking, oh, my God, the Russians, what might they do? Thank you, Christopher. Um, what might they do? You know, we, we, so we better not, the U.S. better not help Ukraine too much or the Russians may get mad. I think that's what was going on earlier today when the Russians did this, saying, oh, because of the West's involvement, this is now a war, right? A very serious. It is interesting that he said that, trying to ratchet things up right before the terror attack. Again, I still suspect it was probably a coincidence, but it's interesting, right? And keep in mind, this is only days after the Russian elections too. It's just interesting that the attack is happening now. But again, ISIS took credit supposedly today and I my guess would be it's probably ISIS. You know, would be my guess. Um, now in Ukraine, 
I did want to start with the terror attack because that was the big story today. But overnight in Ukraine, the other really big story is that the Russians launched a massive attack on Ukraine last night. Uh, 60 Shahid drones, 90 missiles. Um, they clearly had been saving up to go after Ukraine. They uh, went nuts on Ukraine's power infrastructure, which is ironic because I'm about to tell you a story about President Biden wimping out when it comes to going after Russia's power infrastructure, but the Russians went after Ukraine's power infrastructure. Vlad messaged me to confirm this, but it was in the news. Uh, Vlad is actually in heart, poor Vlad. Our friend Vlad, who does our Saturday show with us when he's in town, uh, I mean, he's from Ukraine, but when he's back home, well, okay, actually, let me tell you, Vlad is from Kharkiv, Northeastern Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine's second largest city, 1.5 million people. That's the town, among others, that the Russians really hit hard last night. Um, Vlad moved with his family when the war started to southwestern Ukraine so as to, because his wife at the time was, uh, excuse me, his daughter at the time was three years old, and they wanted to get the daughter, oop, all the way over here, get the daughter out of harm's way. They went this weekend back to Kharkiv to get a number of their affairs, you know, to deal with sort of, because the, the, they're kind of thinking at this point, you know, are they ever really going back? So they wanted to get a bunch of their stuff out of Kharkiv, and of course they got attacked. Vlad said the power was, was out completely across the entire town. We read that in the papers as well, that Kharkiv lost all of its power, 1.5 million people. Um, the Russians also hit a hydroelectric dam uh, near Zaporizhia. Remember Zaporizhia? Zaporizhia province all around here. Remember hydroelectric dams? Remember the last time the Russians hit a hydroelectric dam? They blew up the dam. It is widely believed the Russians blew up the dam that was around over here and flooded the entire area, killing God knows how many people. Um, well, they went after a dam again today. Um, it was, a, as I said, a horrific attack across the board. Um, I'm trying to see here. Uh, it, it even cut off the power to the nuclear plant, but the backup power did work, which is good news. And um, this was interesting. According to Wall Street Journal correspondent Yaroslav Trofimov, Russia is taking advantage of Republicans in the U.S. House cutting off the resupply of air defense interceptors. So the Wall Street Journal reporter believes that Russia is trying to do all of these big attacks to take advantage of the fact that uh, Republicans in Congress have cut off all American aid to Ukraine, including interceptors, because one of the things Ukraine is now starting to run low on are the actual interceptors they use to take down the missiles coming in to hit them, the Russian missiles. The U.S. was providing a lot of those. Um, next story. All right, quick sip of water, and then let's do the next story here. So, Financial Times, all right, and uh, what we got, six, three, yeah. Got a few more stories here, and guys, please do keep the gifts coming, all right? Subscribe, you know, gift super chat. By the way, super chat questions on YouTube. I will always uh, answer those the next thing I talk about. That will always get your question answered. As I said, the subscriptions are great. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Bjorn. Uh, thank you, Hakan. Um, but subscriptions are great on YouTube and TikTok because, frankly, they're a way of supporting my work every month, which is nice. Um, it's a because I'm hoping. I'm hoping at one point I did, but it's it's frankly down now. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not making enough now, to be honest. That's why I keep harping on this with you guys. At one point, I was making enough to cover my expenses. I'm not anymore. So that's why I keep bugging you guys. So if you can help, I would very much appreciate it because I do do this full time and I'd like to keep doing it full time. So uh, Financial Times. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Hakan. I do like that. There's a very funny uh, Easter bunny ears thing. TikTok has all sorts of funky gifts. I will say. TikTok takes too much of the money, but the gifts are pretty funny. Um, but I like a bunny ear gift thing they do on TikTok that's very funny. So Financial Times, really, 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 really obnoxious story today in the Financial Times, um, which tends to be a very good publication. It's kind of the Wall Street Journal of Great Britain, basically. Thank you, Pedro. And Financial Times reports today that basically the Biden, I will say Biden, because his people didn't do this without him, Biden told the Ukrainians to stop attacking Russian energy infrastructure because the Russians have been going after the Russian, uh, excuse me, the Ukrainians have been going after the Russian oil refineries, right, for, for several months now. Uh, in response, by the way, to the Russians, the Russians, you got to take this in context, okay? Um, yes, he is still in Kharkiv, yes. Uh, you got to take this in context. The Russians last year, remember the first year of the war? So this would have been the winter of 2022-23, and the Russians spent the entire winter trying to take out Ukraine's power. They wanted to freeze the Ukrainians to death over the winter, right? Without power, you don't have heat. And this is a very cold country. Thank you, Chad, right? 
Ukraine's a super cold country. I mean, imagine, you know, Chicago in winter kind of cold, okay? You know, maybe not Minnesota, well, maybe Minnesota too, but certainly Chicago in winter kind of cold. And you don't have heat, okay? It also means you can't cook. How the heck are you going to cook? At one point, we were doing fundraisers for little mini stoves, little mini stoves made out of like metal that you can put newspaper in or wood so people could go outside of their homes and literally cook on these things, right? I mean, that's how bad it was. So the Russians have been, since the war started, trying to knock out power to all of Ukraine. Zelensky this year said twice, once was on the American show 60 Minutes. Zelensky said this year that if the Russians keep doing this this year, this winter, Ukraine will hit back and go after Russia's energy infrastructure. Ukraine has been doing that. Ukraine has been hitting the oil refineries a lot. Thank you, Arbig. I appreciate the, the and you know I love my galaxies. I like my uh, solar system stuff. So thank you for that. Um, Ukraine's been going after Russian oil refineries in a big way. Um, some estimates are 7 to 10% of Russian oil refineries are, or oil refine, refinement, whatever the verb would be. Uh, oil refining has been taken offline this quarter because of the Ukrainians. So that's great, right, from a Ukrainian perspective. The White House told them to stop it. The White House told, this is according to the Financial Times, and I will say, it's possible the story is not true. Financial Times is a very good, respected publication. Uh, thank you, Strange Brew. Appreciate the gift. Um, you know, very respected publication. And let me just read this to you. I mean, I'm, I'm livid about this. And again, it's so, con by the way, the last few days since I got out of TikTok jail, I was telling you again why I blame Biden in part for this, right? Why I blame Biden. Actually, liberals and conservatives should both be standing up back six because you don't need to be a liberal or a conservative to support stopping Russia and to support uh, Ukraine because at least Americans used to all agree that freedom and democracy matter and that we need to stand up to the bullies around the world, which does include the Russians. So um, very proud. You can use whatever loaded word you want. And by the way, mods, he, back six is a troll. So take, take him out because <laughs> he's a troll. Um, you can use whatever loaded word you want to try to attack me and to attract Ukrainian supporters. But the bottom line is we believe in freedom. We believe in democracy. And we believe in defending the little guy against the big bad guy. And I always have, whether it was the Soviet Union, whether it's Russia, I always have, and I always will. So, and again, conservatives, the irony is conservatives used to believe in that before Donald Trump came along. And I still would like to believe that some of you still do. Um, thank you, TL. Lovely. TL just became a subscriber, a Patriot launcher. I appreciate that. And Dark Phoenix, thank you for the gift as well. Um, and we're not going to talk about Israel and Palestine because it's a horrible issue. And it's obnoxious people on all sides of that topic. And we're not even talking about it. And Israel and Palestine, I'm not going to get into it, but have absolutely nothing to do with Ukraine. Ukraine has not been launching terrorist attacks against Russia for 75 years. Ukraine did not invade Russia and kill 1,200 people. Ukraine did not invade Russia. Thank you, Lorianne. And take 240 hostages, including babies, and kill some of them. Thank you, Anna. So I get, I get a little bristled when Palestinian defenders come and try to steal other issues to defend their cause. We are talking about Ukraine. It's not your right to come here and steal the Ukrainian suffering for yourself. And secondly, it is completely inappropriate and historically inaccurate to suggest that the Ukrainians are the Palestinians because the Ukrainians have not been killing anybody for 75 years. The Ukrainians have not been committing international acts of terror. And the Ukrainians did not cross into Russia and kill 1,200 people and take 240 hostages, including innocent babies. The Ukrainians have clean hands. The Palestinians do not have clean hands. But by the way, Israel doesn't have clean hands either. I'm not going to get into the whole issue. But anybody who says, wow, clearly hasn't been coming to my show the last two years. Um, the, uh, neither the Palestinians nor the Israelis have clean hands. Neither of them do. They both have enough guilt to go back 75 years. Ukraine, and this is why I get upset about it, because you're not only trying to steal the Ukrainian issue, you're also basically lying about what the Ukrainians are going through. The Ukrainians do not have unclean hands. The Ukrainians are 100% innocent in this battle. 100% innocent. Um, thank you, Chuck Rod. Um, 
the raw, I mean, it, it's not, yeah, any case, let's not even get into it. All right, so let's get back to this story from the Financial Times because it's really freaking obnoxious. Um, really freaking obnoxious. Um, and mods, I will say this. People who try to bring up the Palestinian thing, give them a timeout just because it's always done in a situation. I mean, I'll tell the mods later, but it's always done in a way to try to take us away. You know, like I'm fine with people asking about both issues during Q&A, but when they do it during this part of the show, when we're literally in the middle of talking about like terrorist attacks against the, you know, the Russians and everything else, and they try to bring up the Palestinian stuff, it's literally someone trying to steal the issue. And I don't like that. And it's been happening. And the mods, the mods are often too aggressive. But on that issue, if somebody tries to bring up the Palestinian thing when literally we're in the middle of talking about something else, give them a five minute timeout. That's enough. Not longer than that, but five minutes, because I will tell you guys, 99% of the time, it's someone being a pain. It's not someone trying to just, you know, have an intellectual conversation. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, but that issue has been annoying me lately because, as I said, there's a little too much cultural appropriation. I hate that term, <laughs> cultural appropriation, but that's exactly what it is. Thank you, Dora. They're trying to steal the Ukrainian issue, and I kind of find it offensive. In any case, let's go back to the Financial Times. Enough of these people. So listen to this. One person said, so the Biden administration told the Ukrainians today, apparently not today, in the last couple of months, to stop attacking Russian oil. Ta stop attacking Russian oil. Thank you, Eddie. Right? I mean, amazing. Um, absolutely. Listen to this. While, while the Russians are attacking Ukrainian energy left and right. Listen to this. One person said, thank you, Chazak. One person said that the White House had grown increasingly frustrated by brazen Ukrainian drone attacks that have struck oil refineries, terminals, depots, and storage facilities across Western Russia, hurting its oil production capacity. Washington is also concerned. Oh, and they said, basically, Biden is worried that if the Ukrainians hit Russian oil, it's going to cause international oil prices to spike, which is going to hurt his reelection. Now, a couple issues there. First of all, you're telling the Ukrainians who are in a fight for their life to not do everything they can to save their country because you need to get reelected and your election matters more than their lives. That's the first problem. Now, I understand why Biden is worried about his reelection, and he should be. I'm not sure it's appropriate for him to be telling the Ukrainians that they need to basically, I don't know, is it su not sucker punch? What's the word I'm looking for? Basically, that they need to, what, what do you call it? Throw the fight? You know, like when a boxer or when somebody in a sport gets paid off to lose, <laughs> right? I mean, that we're supposed to tell the Ukrainians, just don't fight as hard, please, because Biden's got to win, right? So that's the first problem. The second thing, and the second thing is classic Biden. Now, okay, these are from three different sources that the Financial Times got these from. It is possible the story is wrong, but I will tell you, um, I have a hard time believing the Financial Times would run with this story if they didn't have it. Um, also, this sounds, listen to the second paragraph. This sounds like pure Biden, okay? Listen to this. Um, Washington is also concerned that if Ukraine keeps hitting Russian facilities, including many that are hundreds of miles from the border, I love that one. I love that little throw in there, which is basically, you know, how dare Ukraine hit something that's hundreds of miles away from the border? That's just not right, right? How presumptuous of them. Like, what gumption those Ukrainians have that they would dare hit something deep inside Russia, right? I mean, Right. I mean, just the, there, there's an arrogance here to the language even. Right. So the White House is concerned that if Ukraine keeps hitting Russian oil facilities, including many that are hundreds of miles from the border, Russia could retaliate by lashing out at energy infrastructure relied on by the West. This includes the CPC pipeline carrying oil from Kazakhstan through Russia to the global market. Western companies, including ExxonMobil and Chevron, use the pipeline, which Moscow briefly shut down in 2022. That's the issue going up. Now, the experts I've been reading have already been casting doubt on the idea that the Ukrainian attacks would make any significant impact on oil prices globally. They don't think that they don't think that's real. What they are worried about is that Russia, now mind you, that Russia would ask that Ukraine doing a legitimate attack on Russia's energy, because mind you, the Russians have been attacking Ukraine energy for two years now, okay? 
for two years. They just, I mean, they just did it in Kharkiv. But that if the Ukrainians go after Russia's energy, Russia will retaliate by taking out pipelines used by the West. Okay? You know, I mean, and I, I'm trying to find like ways of saying this that I can get away with. On YouTube, I'd be fine. <laughs> the gulag people less so. Um, the, the only reason Russia would consider taking out an oil pipeline that the West relies on is because of statements like this from the Biden administration. Okay? The Biden administration is basically saying, oh my God, the Russians might hurt us. We better cower in fear and let them know about it, right? Well, if I'm the bad guy, I am going to do even more to make you cower in fear, right? I may even hit some pipelines to make you cower in fear. Um, the way you stop the Russians from hitting oil pipelines is you basically you basically tell them that will be an escalation and we're going to respond, right? By the way, how can we respond? Well, before the Republicans cut off all the aid, and again, I blame Joe Biden for that too because Biden could have given Ukraine a lot of aid before, before the Republicans cut it off. He, did, he gave them a lot. He just didn't give them the right aid, right? He didn't give them what they needed. Before the Republicans cut everything off, Biden could have said, you hit our oil pipelines, we're giving F-16s. You give them, you hit our oil, but thank you. And uh, oh boy, I'm never going to get that right, soldier. And one CO, uh, I'm guessing there's a military term there I'm not getting. <laughs> I'm going to call you a soldier. Thank you for the gift. I appreciate it on TikTok. Um, right. You tell the Russians, you take out the oil that's going to the West and Ukraine's getting all the F-16s it wants. You take out the oil going to the West and Ukraine's getting the long range attack it's been wanting forever. You take out the oil going to the West, and you know those 31 Abrams tanks the U.S. provided? Imagine what would happen if we gave Ukraine 100 of them, right? You take out, you take out the oil, and you know those two or three Patriot missile batteries? What if, what if Ukraine got 10 of them? What if they got long-range missiles, like that the, the Germans have, the Taurus cruise missiles, right? But, but this is, I mean, and this is what drives me nuts because people say, what would you do if you were Biden? I would, I would from the beginning, every time the Russians did something outrageous, I would have stepped in and gone, okay, you did something outrageous. Now I'm giving Ukraine HIMARS. And then the next time they did something outrageous, I'd be like, now they're getting Patriot missiles. By the way, Patriot missiles, we waited a freaking year to give Ukraine the missiles to just defend itself from being killed. All Patriot, Patriot missiles do not attack the Russians. Patriot missiles go and literally shoot down Russian missiles that are coming in to kill civilians. So again, why would we delay something like that? We did. But this is how you, this is how you convince the Russians and you say there will be a price to be paid for every time you escalate. What do we do? We go, you know, that, that famous quote from the West Wing, you know, please don't hurt us, right? Please don't hurt me. That's what we tell the Russians. No, this is outrageous. Um, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Stephen Pfeiffer, uh, said today, it is absolutely outrageous, if true, if the Biden administration did this. Ukraine is fighting for its life. The U.S. should not be telling Kyiv what targets in Russia it can or cannot strike with Ukraine's own weapons, which is, which is true. Um, oil refineries produce fuel and lubricants for Russia's tanks warships and military aircraft they are legitimate military targets and that's the final point here okay two final points um thank you stooge um this is true i'll get to that in a second stooge so two final points here um uh, sorry real quick um one the russian federal budget and i've talked about this before 40 percent of the russian federal budget so meaning you know the, the government's budget 40 percent of it comes from energy russia's energy sales account for 40% of the money they've got for the country to spend on everything. 40%, that's a lot. That means you go after energy if you can. And we have, by the way, we've gone after energy with our sanctions, right? But that means if you're UK, you go after the energy. The second thing, as the ambassador pointed out, that oil is literally being used to fuel and also, like I said, lubricants and things for tanks and warplanes that are attacking Ukraine. That oil, you cut off that oil and you've cut off their tanks and you've cut off their planes. I, it, this is just beyond me. I, I'm just absolutely beyond me. I, I'm just, anyway. 
just infuriating. Now, Stooge raises a fair point, but I still feel Stooge at this point, I don't buy it anymore. But Stooge says, um, remember that Biden has much more info than we do. That is true. That is true. And I will say, you're always dealing with that handicap if you are working in issues like any issue you work on, frankly, that deals with uh, federal policy. You know, I mean, all the work I've done in Washington all these years, and I've done a lot of domestic policy work in Washington as well. You never know what they know on the inside. You don't know what the president knows. But I feel like at this point, watching Biden for two, well, three years in a way, but two years, certainly since two plus years since, well, now since the war started, right, over two years since the war started, there's been, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's been smoke and 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 smoke. This has happened too many times. I feel like we've seen far too many examples of what looks like Biden being chicken of the Russians, frankly. And at this point, it started. And the second, actually, the second problem, you could be right in that maybe Biden has a legitimate reason for, for suggesting Ukraine and maybe a legitimate reason for not giving Ukraine all the weapons it needed and still needs, right? Maybe. But if you're on the outside, it looks like cowardice. Guess who else is on the outside? The Chinese. The Chinese are watching. And the, the Chinese, it looks like cowardice because it does to me. If I were advising the Chinese, and this is no secret what I'm going to say, I would say Biden's chicken. Biden has publicly said, if you've got nuclear weapons, He's not going to go to war with you. He said this at the beginning of the war in Ukraine. He said, we were not going to give fighter jets to Ukraine because the Russians, and he got pissed about this and said, because the Russians have nuclear weapons and we can't afford to get into a war with somebody with nuclear weapons. It'd be World War III, he said, right? Thank you, Janice. It'd be World War III. And I said at the time, that's a very dangerous thing to say. You don't tell a country with nukes that we're afraid, that we're afraid to go to war with you. Because then if I'm, the, if I'm the other country, I go, great, you're afraid of me? Then I'm going to do whatever I want. And as Marcus just said, then Taiwan is fair game. Because guess who else has nukes? China. So are we afraid to go to war with China too? Because as Biden said, we don't go to war with countries that have nukes because that means World War III. So I guess we're not going to go to war with China so China could invade Taiwan. Is that, is that what Biden's saying? Right? I mean, it's, this is dangerous stuff. And the problem is, that is the impression on the outside. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Polish Foreign Minister uh, Radek Sikorski said today that if the U.S. supplemental funding doesn't go through for Ukraine, thank you, Monica, the, the funding that's before Congress has been sitting there for five months at this point, if the funding doesn't go through, um, oops, let me pull this up again, after Biden has said he wants it to go through, meaning it shows Biden's weak, some allies will start hedging, he said. And by hedging, I think he means some allies will start um, hedging their bets. In other words, realizing, you know what? We can't count on America. Maybe we need to start sucking up to the Russians or the Chinese or somebody else because clearly we can't count on America. So we've got to, we've got to basically hedge our bets, as it's called in, in, in betting, right? In, poke, in gambling. Um, some allies will start hedging. And others will start considering developing their own nuclear weapons. Thank you, Hedge. That is something I've raised before, is that I think Biden is giving the world, excuse me, the Russians are giving the world the best argument for nuclear proliferation we've ever seen. Thank you, Running. Um, and thank you, Bellin, as well, for the bear. The best argument ever for nuclear proliferation, right? Which is A, if you're Ukraine, you gave up your nukes in the early 1990s. Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. Ukraine... Uh, leaves the Soviet Union when the Soviet Union dissolves in 1991. 1994, they negotiate and Ukraine gives up its nukes in exchange for promises from the West that they will defend you know, Ukraine against Russia. And Russia says, oh, we'll never attack you. Everyone signs a document. It's total BS. The Ukrainians made the biggest mistake of their literal lives, their survival of their country on giving up nukes. They should have never given up nukes, ever, ever. That's lesson one from the Ukraine war. Never give up your nukes. And by the way, that's not a good lesson, right? Lesson two, get nukes. Because A, if you're Ukraine, right, you're in a much better situation if you got nukes than if you don't. B, Russia's gotten away with murder by having nukes. Thank you, James, right? I mean, we know this. I mean, again, President Biden himself even said that we can't afford to go to war with Russia because they've got nukes. And war with a nuclear country, Google it, war with a nuclear country means World War III. Well, then I want to be a nuclear country, right? I mean, this is great. 
I mean, Biden didn't want, A, we certainly have punished Russia for invading Ukraine, but we didn't do everything we could. We didn't give Ukraine all the weapons it needed. And by the way, I think Ukraine could have pushed Russia out in the two years we had before Republicans in Congress cut off all American aid. Ukraine could have pushed Russia out had we gotten them the weapons they needed, A, the weapons they needed, and B, in time. And we didn't drag our feet because we were afraid of the Russians. Why did we drag our feet? Why did we not give all the weapons? Why have we told the Ukrainians not to go after Russian oil? Because we're afraid of Russia's nukes, for starters. And we're afraid of Russian threats more generally. Don't do it. Don't do it. I will kill you. Okay, they're giving me, they just, TikTok just gave me a warning that said I was flagged for election violation coverage. So help me God. Election violation coverage? Seriously? Okay, they haven't killed the live yet. Yeah, it's not funny though. They literally just gave me a warning, which now I've got to go report this again. They just gave me a warning that they did something to my account saying I just did election, election coverage violation. Man, who knows what it means? Who knows what it means? This is just, it is, it is absolutely just astounding to me. I have no idea what it means. No, I grabbed, I grabbed a picture. I saved it. I have no idea what it means. I have no idea. Who knows? Now I've got to contact the people helping me because this means it's another, which this means it's another thing in my account. Boy, it's just amazing. Absolutely. And we're talking about, we're not even, when did we talk about the U.S. election? Right? Why should I restart the live? What does that do? Um, right? I mean, what? Th thank you, Diamond. You didn't have to do that. Thank you. Um, I, just any case. You know what? No, because these are the bad guys reporting it. Ignore them, guys. I always say, the, you know what? The best thing you can do to make the bad guys pay for reporting this kind of stuff and putting in the fake reports, give me gifts. <laughs> Every time the bad guys do this, support my work. Okay? I don't know what it, what is resetting. What do you mean reset? What, it, what needs to reset? The live is still live. They're claiming they put it in my account. Thank you, Monica. Man. Well, yeah, except TikTok claims that when you report stuff, oh, they have a real person look at it. Thank you, Chazek. They have a real person look at it to make sure it's a real violation. Man. I mean, this is just very bad. Yeah. Wow. Although, having said that, the account is still going. Thank you, Addy. So who knows what's going on? I mean, I, I'm still blown away. Election. I, I don't trust me. I saved a picture of it. I'm going to send it to folks afterwards. Absolutely blows my mind. In any case, um, so um, a little bit more news, a little bit more news. I know I was going after Biden. That, that's really the funny thing. Well, the microphone, the microphone is kind of a pain, titanium, because um, on, uh, on YouTube, which I streamed just simultaneously, the microphone's never loud enough and they've, it's got to be turned up and it always makes it a little hot for you guys, which I don't like doing, but it's, it's hard to find like an in-between uh, way of doing it, which is weird, you know? Um, so anyway, all right, let's just keep going. I'm going to have to report this to somebody now to see, because I'm sure now they put a violation in my folder, which is going to be one of those, one of those, you know, if you keep doing this, we're going to cancel your account games, which makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, literally, election, election. We didn't even talk about the election today. <laughs> I mean, we literally never talked about the election today. I have no idea. Right, we were, well, interestingly enough, we just talked about China and Taiwan, which is fascinating. You know, absolutely fascinating. No, we said, right, we had said that Biden had mentioned the election and worrying about the oil prices. That was the, literally the only mention of the election today. Yeah. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, oh, man. In any case, guys, let's go on. So a um, little more here. First 10 Ukrainian pilots have graduated from flight school under the guidance of the Royal Air Force. Um, I was talking to Cam about this, and we think these are the pilots that uh, do not have any uh, aviation background. Um, but nonetheless, they finished with the Brits. They're now going to train with the French and hopefully, you know, they could even be f uh, flying F-16 soon if we're lucky. Uh, Frank Thomas, thank you very much for the gift from New, Ze New Zealand. 
somewhere I've never been and have been dying to go. So thank you for that. Pedro. Thank you, Pedro. Pedro says, Finland used 19% of the population to defend themselves. Ukraine is calling 1 million soldiers is only 2.5% um, if if you count uh, call for mobilization. Yeah, I don't, you know, Vlad did his own analysis and was not convinced that there were that many eligible men to call up. I mean, because even though you, you have a lot of women in the Ukrainian military, 20% actually, I'm not sure women do the combat jobs. I'm not sure about that. A lot of militaries that let women in still kind of play games with that. Um, but Vlad was saying that the numbers really aren't that good in terms of Ukraine being able to call up that many men. Um, now, Finland, that's interesting. 19% is interesting. The only thing is, I guess I'd want to know more about what that means. Finland used 19% of its population to defend itself. I mean, is it saying that, you know what I mean? Like, what, what are they? Women do do combat in Ukraine. Okay, Courtney says women do. That's good. Okay, women do do combat. But you know what I mean? Like, I'd like to know what jobs the, um, that 19% are doing in Finland. Because, although, frankly, that is something maybe they can emulate in Ukraine, right? I doubt it's 19% of the population. Maybe it is 19% of the country, like, holds, you know, literally is ready to fight. I don't know, right? Is that possible? Um... Yeah, Kay, the issue is, though, what people talk about in the chat shouldn't matter. because that doesn't, That's not me, and I can't even control what people say in the chat. Although, it makes you wonder, because somebody was racist last week in the chat, literally right before they canceled my live for a week. We had reported the racist, and I kid you not, we reported the racist, and immediately, like, immediately after the report from several of the mods, they canceled my live. And I mean, literally, and which was very suspicious as well. It's like, we're reporting like a bad user and you flipping out at me like should we not report racism like i hope you agree we should report racism and frankly we will continue to report it you know oh man anyway oh my god all right um yeah that's interesting pedro i'd be very curious to learn more about oh, but no i know finland i want to say finland for example infamously or famously has all of those shelters underground for like millions of people or something, right? So Finland, I wouldn't be surprised. Thank you, Dennis. Finland, I wouldn't be surprised that they've got kind of a, a big, a big, uh, you know, sort of system for, for helping out, right? For, for, for defending the country. Um, let me see. Um, you know what? That's really all we got for the news today, guys. Let's skip the news. And I mean, that, that's pretty much it. Let's do Q&A. Yeah, we started the show talking about the uh, terrorist attack in, in Moscow. Uh, we talked a lot about that. We can talk about it some more. Uh, for sure, if you guys want, um, or any of the other news. Um, I do have the auction items. Like I said, do check out our auction items over at Discord. Uh, you can find the Discord. A lot of cool stuff from Ukraine. The auction goes through Tuesday, but we've got a lot of cool... Actually, let me see if I've got... Find one or two of the things I haven't shown you yet. Actually, a couple things, though. I think this is kind of cool, though. It's a little Ukrainian Petrokivka Easter egg, but it's a... It's a uh, what do you call it? Keychain, which is kind of neat but hand-painted Petrokivka style. I could take it out and show you, but you get the idea. Um, but we get a lot of cool stuff from Ukraine. The, um, very fun, the, the Ukrainian trident, it's a fridge magnet for the fridge, but hand-painted by a Ukrainian artist we know who does really beautiful work, but very pretty. Again, the Petrokivka style. Um, lots of other stuff too, lots of other stuff. But you can check that out in our Discord community. We have auctions that benefit Ukraine. Half the money goes to Ukraine, half the money goes to support my work. Um, but you can find it. You guys can find it at the Aravosis.com link. You guys can find it by going to uh, my profile on TikTok and look for the Linktree link, that link with the arrows pointing to it. Thank you, Jane. And you will find, uh, click there and you'll see Discord listed. And that'll show you my Discord community. So I don't know, you know, JMA, how certain is war with Russia and NATO? I don't know. I mean, look, I think we're back to where we were with the Soviet Union, right? which is war is not a certainty, but war is a risk, right? I mean, with Russia, we were hoping all of that was over, that we no longer had to worry about war with Russia after the Soviet Union dissolved, right? That that threat was gone. Russia would no longer threaten us. They would want to be our neighbor, right? Um, don't know out of my house. You just got to go look. I don't know how I set it up. I have no idea how I set it up this week, whether that's uh, in the VIP section or not. I don't know. Um, I, I'm saying I just don't remember. You'd have to you'd have to go look. Um, 
Anyway, it's a, uh, oops, sorry here. I'm looking at some of your questions. Thank you, Louisa. Um, Ukraine, Christopher, good question. Um, Christopher says, how did you first start reporting on Ukraine and your advocacy? You know, um, I mean, my background is foreign policy. I have a really strong background in foreign policy, going back forever, studying it at graduate school at Georgetown, speaking five languages. I've lived around the world, blah, 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 right? Um, so I've always, th that's my background, but... When the war broke out, I, I have always paid a lot of attention to the Soviets be first and then the Russians after them. Um, it's an issue as an American that I have found very important to U.S. foreign policy that I've certainly been involved with. So the first time the Russians invaded in 2014 Ukraine, I was sort of very involved just doing what I could online to get attention because I felt bad for the Ukrainians. And the second time, the same thing. Um, it, I just simply, the war broke out and I decided I was going to cover it on, on TikTok and YouTube and everywhere else. And you know, I write on, on Twitter as well. I was going to cover it. I was going to do what I best I could to synthesize the information because that's also some of my background because I've worked in journalism and other, other areas that um, I think one of the things I'm good at is taking information and trying to sort of crystallize it for you, like crunch it down look at a lot of different sources and a lot of different stuff and hopefully tell you quickly what's going on. Thank you, Jetta. But also what is, um, what it means, which is why I get annoyed at Biden because I think underneath it all, I think there's a fear factor with Biden and Putin and that that's my read of, of seeing what's going on working in Washington. So anyway, I, that's kind of was it. I mean, they, they invaded again. I got very upset <laughs> and wanted to help the Ukrainians and wanted to stop the Russians. So I decided I would I would report on it and and talk about it. Um, I did thank Diamond Girl, but thank you for mentioning it, Keps, because I do sometimes forget to thank people. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, I mean, I speak I'm fluent in French. I, now I would say I'm fluent in French and Spanish. My Italian is good but rusty, and my Greek is okay. It's I mean, it's really good for somebody who doesn't know Greek. Um, it's okay. It's rusty. It's rusty. You know, if I went to Greece, I'd be, I would survive. I wouldn't have a problem. I could take taxis and restaurants and everything else. Um, I would never be able to have a political argument in Greek. Italian, 50-50. Greek, no way. I could have a political argument in Spanish or French. Yes, yes. So, yeah, so it kind of depends. So, um, nah, Damien, not really. That's kind of trolly. Um, you know, the thing is, Russia invaded Ukraine. America did not invade Ukraine. America did not start the war. Russia started the war. So actually, and by the way, the history of America's involvement in the world is World War I and World War II. A, America saved you, A. B, America didn't really want to save you, which is the irony here. I mean, it's ironic because people will put out sort of trolly comments like, oh, America getting involved in the world. World War I and World War II, we didn't want to get involved. <laughs> I mean, the irony is there was too much isolationism in America, right? I mean, Churchill kept trying to get the Americans involved in World War II, and they were like, eh. Um, but, um, but then we did. And you can thank America, along with the Europeans and a lot of countries in Asia and everywhere else, for beating the bad guys in World War I and World War II. You're very welcome. Um, so, yeah. But in Ukraine, give me a break. Give me a break. You know, the Russians started it. The Russians are the bad guys. There's not, it's not debatable, really. Um, kind of what's going on in Ukraine. It's pretty, it's pretty clear what's going on in Ukraine. Um, you know, the interesting thing, so somebody just asked, and I, but I don't see if you have a name there on TikTok, what impact does the Russian concert shooting have? So the Russian concert shooting is the terrorist attacks today in Moscow. You know, they provide, well, here's the interesting thing. I was watching a, a former Obama official on CNN right before the show with you guys, and she was saying that she does not think this is an attack that Putin himself did because Putin has a history that suggests maybe he could have done it, right? Um, she said she does not believe that. She thinks this attack is very embarrassing for Putin, that it makes him look weak. And especially after the election, makes him look weak. <clears throat> the, the danger you have is that this attack puts Putin in a position where Putin now has to figure out vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine and vis-a-vis -vis the West, what big nasty thing can he do to try to show people at home that he's still the strong man after a terrorist attack that killed 40, 50 or more people, right? Right? Um, I mean, 
that's the that's the uh, oh, no, that's a troll. No, that's a troll. <laughs> that's a troll. I'm even wasting one of my blocks on that one. Um, but um, right. I mean, that's the. Oh, hang on a second here. That's what I worry about with Putin is that he is going to feel the need to show people that he's strong. And that means doing even worse things to Ukraine, I fear, and somehow being even more belligerent towards the West, which isn't very good and safe either. So that's, yeah, I don't know what, what he actually would do, but it's not, uh, it's not good. You know, it, it ain't good. Um, um, just looking here, what folks are saying here. <clears throat> um, when I say America, I also include, I don't know what that means. When I say America, I mean America. I don't mean Canada. No. America is the name for my country. So I never mean Canada when I say America. If I was talking about something general, oh, you mean World War II? What's Canada? I'm not sure how, anyway, I'm not sure what you mean by that. All right, mods, somebody's saying we may have a troll over on YouTube. Just be aware. Um, what else we got, guys? Hey, Blue Ariel, thank you for that. Appreciate that. Um, show me the troll. It's like, show me the money. Show me the troll. Oop, and now I'm getting cold again. Uh, what else we got, guys? What's uh, 705. We're relatively early today. Relatively early. Oops. Ugh. <laughs> General reporter for duty. Exactly. Um, yeah, America, the Americas. The Americas means North and South America. America means the United States of America. Correct. Yeah, but I, I don't. But they might have meant my, my. The only thing is, they might have meant. Oh, you mentioned America, but you should have said Canada too, because we were involved as well. Sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll say. Sometimes I'll say, Europe and America, and I'll forget to mention Canada, like when I'm talking about NATO and Ukraine, for example. So I do forget to mention Canada. Thanks, Ash. I do forget to mention Canada with stuff like that sometimes. So that's why I was asking because it's entirely possible. Oops, just getting a little more light here. It's entirely possible I said something that forgot to mention Canada. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, Manny, I'm not really up. I was wondering about that today too. Manny asked, why do you think like Islamic State would attack Russia? Islamic State, ISIS, took credit today, whether it's the truth, took credit today for the terrorist attack in Russia. Um, the only thing I, I read, because I was kind of wondering that too, you know, the only thing I read with that was that it's possible that, um, frankly, they still hold a grudge against the Russians for the invasion of Afghanistan. I mean, it's certainly possible, right? You're talking that's back to the 1980s, which was a while ago, you know? But um, I don't know enough. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about sort of Russia and ISIS, meaning the connection there. I need to look into it more because I'm not really sure, you know? Um, but that is something that the U.S. warned. The U.S. warned of that very threat that we had intelligence suggesting ISIS was going to come after Russia. You know? Um, Syria, well, okay, yeah, yeah. And Rich is saying, that's a good point, Syria too. They've claimed, they've claimed that Russia had Islamic blood on their hands in Syria and Afghanistan. You know, Afghanistan, certainly. Syria, sure. I mean, I, well, actually, I shouldn't say sure. I mean, Syria, obviously, right? I mean, Syria, I mean, it's horrific. God, Syria more so, actually. I mean, Afghanistan, obviously, horrible what that country's gone through, frankly, all of our wars, right? But, but Syria, I mean, my God, you know, the chemical warfare and everything else in Syria, dear Lord. I mean, that's just horrific what people experience there. So that's an, yeah, that, that's the, that could be it right there, right? Um, Charles, thank you for beco becoming a Patriot launcher. And Ben, thank you for giving the gift membership. Who's that? And NE got it. Excellent. Got to, got the gift. Um, correct. That's what we're saying, David. Right. Because of Russia's involvement in Syria, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so that could be, that could very easily be what it was. Um, but still weird though, because you just don't normally think of ISIS terrorist attacks you know, in Moscow, it's just, just, I don't know. You just, you know, I don't know. You just don't think about it. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate that. Um, well, I was wondering about Chechnya too, because you've also got parts of Russia that are Muslim. So, right. 
that that gets it Dagestan too like that gets interesting too depending on what the what the you know the impression is on the treatment of those regions because they're Muslim regions in Russia you know so oh Maddie troll Maddie 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 <laughs> goodbye Matt little troll Matt is leaving us oh you got him before I could even perfect yeah I wish I did Matt <laughs> <laughs> I really, well, I did I, I don't wish I did, but I wish I lived better. But what do you do? Um, ah, uh, oop. Interesting, interesting, interesting. All right, what else we got, guys? Um, um, but yeah, I haven't seen. I mean, I, I could look really quick and see if any any additional news on the terror attack. I don't know if there is going to be more news because it's overnight in Russia now, you know. So the news might kind of stop as far as that goes. Um, let me see here. Well, more talk about the Kremlin dismissing Western warnings and calling it blackmail, which is true. Three days ago, Putin dismissed Western warnings of possible terrorist attacks, and the U.S. the U.S. warning literally said. Uh, Because it was U.S. Embassy that put it out. I mean, I talked about it on the show two weeks ago. The U.S. literally warned about concert venues being potentially dangerous. And this was a concert venue that was attacked. But who knows? You know, it could have been a coincidence. Um, Looking here. I don't know. Yeah. Um... Okay, just seeing this now from CBS News, the U.S. has intelligence confirming the Islamic State's claim of responsibility for the attacks in Russia. The U.S. official also confirms the U.S. has provided intelligence to Russia about a potential attack. Okay, so it, it looks like it's pointing more and more to ISIS, which is Islamic State. They were calling it, by the way, like ISIS-K, which uh, refers to Islamic State operating out of Afghanistan. Which actually makes, okay, which makes sense. If it's Afghanistan, Russia's history in Afghanistan, you know, long memory. I mean, we're talking the 1980s, but still, you know, obviously pretty gruesome what Russia did there in the 80s with with the invasion and the occupation. Um, Interesting. Yep. uh, U.S. official tells CBS News the U.S. has intelligence confirming the Islamic State's claim of responsibility and that they have no reason to doubt those claims. The U.S. official also confirmed that the U.S. provided intelligence to Russia. Okay, there we go. So, yeah. Wow. Um, Some reports that the death toll could be up to 62. I mean, it was really bad. I mean, literally walking into a shopping mall. It was I mean, the video I, I only saw and I do not want to see video like that. I only saw the video briefly. It was horrible. Um, cause I don't like, I mean, I don't like checking out, you know, watching stuff, even the war video, I'm kind of iffy on, you know what I mean? Um, but I definitely don't like to watch videos of stuff like that. Um, I was going to say, you'd think it would be pretty high. Now, the weird thing is, interestingly enough, I had read this, you know, one, one analyst, uh, an actual sort of military analyst saying that it was very strange because near the beginning of the attack, they lit the roof on fire. And I mean, this was... This was a huge fire on the roof of this building. I mean, huge fire. And if it was only four or five of them, how did they get up there and light the entire roof on fire, right? If it's only four or five of them, how do you do that? At the same time that you're running around doing all the stuff you're doing, you know? So I don't know, maybe, maybe, hard to know, right? Um, but, But the thought there was whether they had other people helping them. And in other words, it was a bigger attack than just four or five people. As aviation just said, well planned. That's what the the sort of defense analyst I was reading said. He felt he felt it looked like it was probably much better planned than people realize, and that there may have been a bigger team than just four or five people. You know? Yeah. Yeah, just wild. Um but uh but no, but the fire was all over the place. I mean it was a fire all over the roof was it was, you know, wild. Yeah. They reportedly did have, yeah, Avery, they reportedly did have those. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to report, the, I don't want to repeat the word. <laughs> yeah, but Baba, there's no reason the CIA would have done this. What's the benefit in the CIA doing this? Zero. There's zero benefit of the CIA doing this. And again, you got to remember, Joe Biden is kind of chicken when it comes to Putin. Joe Biden won't even give Ukraine the weapons they need. Why would Joe Biden then go into Moscow and commit a terrorist attack when he's afraid of even letting Ukraine go after Russian oil facilities, right? 
He's afraid of even giving Ukraine long range attack arms missiles, but he's going to go and say, hey, let's, you know, he's going to go and do a terrorist attack in Moscow. I mean, it, that's not even, that makes no sense. The CIA is not known for causing instability. The CIA causes instability when the U.S. government wants it to. <laughs> this does not benefit the U.S. government. A, it's too dangerous. There's just no way that you, the U.S. wouldn't do it. And by the way, like I said, when you say CIA, you mean the U.S. government. The CIA, CIA is not going to do it on their own. Um, Biden is not going to do this because it's too much of a risk. Because if the Russians were to find out that the U.S. did this, it would be an act of war. And the CIA does need to be the president, yes. Because you'd have to go back a very long time to find the CIA doing stuff without permission. So, yeah. So, and yes, the CIA is good. I, I would have worked for the CIA, frankly. I would have gladly worked for the CIA. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, what do I think is going to happen? Where? With, with, with regards to where, though, JC? You mean Moscow or, or, uh, or uh, Ukraine? Or what do you mean? <laughs> exactly, men in black. Exactly, exactly. Ah. Uh. Could Putin attack Afghanistan? I mean, why would he? You know what I mean? I, I don't, I, I mean, oh, I see what you mean. Well, the question would be, the question would be attacks on ISIS. I see what you mean. D uh, it depends where they are. I mean, this is ISIS in Afghanistan. Sure, if they know where, where these guys are hiding, they could hit them. Yes, they could do that. And I, I would imagine they would. Actually, he kind of needs to, uh, as far as if they, if they could... He, he needs to show, if it's ISIS, he needs to show that he's retaliating and, and going after the people who did this. So, yeah, they could, they could do an attack in Afghanistan if they, well, A, if they know who to, to go after. B, they may just make something up, too. He could just go after anything in Afghanistan and tell the Russian people, ah, those were the bad guys I shot cruise missiles at, even if it's not true, right? So, um, you know, exactly. Never mess with the mods. Never mess with the mods. Um, no, I've like, like I said, I, I'm not a big conspiracy theorist in general on anything. So I don't really have problems with the CIA. I don't believe Joe Biden is 10 times more in, you know, evil than, you know, whatever, you know, which, and also people can never decide with Biden anyway. They're always like, they say he's like old and doesn't know what he's doing. And he's also this, you know, evil criminal mastermind and it's like which one is he you know i mean it's kind of silly um taliban with a theater in moscow in the 80s you might be thinking of the theater in the early 2000s maybe 2002 in moscow that i believe was chechens and they did they took over a theater now there might be something earlier i don't know about the taliban might have done something too in the 80s which would make sense with afghanistan i don't know about that but the opera house is 2002 though right deb <clears throat> but but that's a good question. I mean, did the Taliban do anything against the Russians in the 80s? Did they ever do attacks against Russia in Russia? They could have. You know, mind you, that would have been the Soviet Union back then, in two, you know, in, in the 1980s. Thank you, Sheila. Um, but 2002 was the Chechens, correct. But I, that might be the one you're thinking of, though, because it was an opera house. So it would make you think, you know. <clears throat> Thank you, Sheila. It would make you think of that, potentially. Moscow, room or boom? We're talking, there was a major terrorist attack in Moscow today. Um, as, as, as few as 40 people killed, but a lot of reports are coming in saying 69 or more, hundreds injured. They attacked a shopping mall that had a concert venue in it. Thank you, Ginger. That had a concert venue in it. Um, uh, the concert venue housed up to 6,000 people. It was preparing for a concert. That, so there were thousands there probably already. They walked into the, sh into the, sh into the shopping mall with AK-47, well, AK-type assault weapons and just opened fire. Uh, four or five people wearing uh, combat, uh, you know, combat fatigues and just opened fire on civilians. I mean, gruesome. And there's video all over. Uh, the Russian social media had video everywhere. The, um, I saw some of it. I, I sort of stopped watching because I didn't want to watch it, but I'm not going to describe it. But basically, people in a shopping mall getting shot. It was very bad. Um, and that's 
and then you know and and they set the roof on fire somehow so it, it looked like it was a much more bigger coordinated kind of thing and finally islamic state has claimed credit for it islamic state possibly out of afghanistan <clears throat> has claimed credit so really horrible attack um there's a new attack occurring i don't know what do you mean tn is there a there's a second attack oh really let me pull up my Twitter here. Is there? That's very ISIS, by the way. ISIS is known for doing multiple attacks, for basically doing two attacks at once or two attacks within a close time frame of, uh, excuse me, not ISIS, Al-Qaeda. Excuse me, Al-Qaeda is known for doing that. I don't know about ISIS. Um, thank you, Jonathan. But supposedly it's ISIS-K, which is from Afghanistan. I don't know whether you would want to officially say that's Taliban or not. Um, let me look here and just see if anybody's talking about a second attack. Um, sorry, who's that? House of Le Pew. Thank you. Fitz, thank you for the gifts. Um, um, now, interesting. According to some local reports and ISIS's own claim, the attackers withdrew successfully. So the concern is whether the attackers got away. That's bad. Thank you, Tom. Because if they got away, they could be planning a second attack. You know, thank you, Crystals. Um, there's a video out of this is this is uh, various defense people I follow on um, on uh, on TikTok. So this is all uh, uh, sort of rumor and discussion now from defense people. So take it with a grain of salt, obviously. Thank you, Denise. But there's a video out of one of the attackers walking along the highway afterwards, still carrying his gun. Um, good news is he seems to have no ammunition left. Bad news is. Well, bad news is he seems to have no ammunitions left, exactly, which means he used it all. Um, interesting. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Allie. Thank you, Denise. Um, I am not seeing any news about a second attack, guys. I don't know, or a new attack. I don't know if anybody else has anything on that. Thank you, Allie. Typically, Twitter is ahead of the news on that. Like, the people on Twitter are discussing it before it even picks up on CNN. Um, just seeing here. Anybody else got anything on a second attack or not? Oh, okay. Hold on. Callum just sent something. Thanks, Callum. Um, all right. Let me see. Let me see here. Oop, get my glasses. One second, guys. Let's see what we've got here. Oops. I mean, there's nothing here, Callum, that says second attack. Is that what you were saying? Just take a look through it? Because I'm not seeing anything. Um... Hold on. Maybe this was a different link. No, it's not. The link you gave me is giving me just the page overall. Yeah. Sky News. All right, let's pull up Sky News. Hang on. Hang on. Um, 146 people injured, according to Russian media. Russian National Guard leaves the concert hall. That would mean they think it's been subdued. Um firefighters fighting the blaze islamic state says it carried out the attack interesting it it is it said it had attacked a large gathering of christians outside of moscow sort of a weird way of putting it but i guess not weird for them um okay guys there's no report anywhere about a second attack even sky news but sky news also isn't reporting it so yeah, I don't think so, guys. I don't think so. Um, yeah. No. Yep. Yep, events cast. So, okay, so there we go. Israel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think Israel's a little busy at the moment. Yeah, that's not going to, that, that's not even, uh, we're running a little late tonight. So usually, lately, we've been going till around 7.30 or so. You know, so. And my other my other freebie glasses broke, so now I'm using the newer the newer reading glasses. Well, I kind of like these. They're kind of a it's kind of a fun look. No, I think so. But my my other ones, I just glued them back together, but they kind of broke because they're Costco reading glasses. So like it. Although I I like the style though. I wish I grabbed more of these. I think they're kind of cool. Um, just looking here to see what else, what else, what else, what else. Any other news here? They're kind of fun. Yeah, I mean for. Glasses from Costco. I mean, meaning, uh, meaning reading glasses you buy over the counter, right? I, I mean, not glasses, of course. 
will I party this Friday? I will not. I will be watching Suits on my uh, on my TV and preparing for tomorrow. I won't be preparing, but tomorrow, guys, remember, we've got the show um, 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S. for the monthly subscribers on TikTok and the monthly subscribers on YouTube, Discord, Twitch, Kofi. All of you guys, all of you guys on TikTok can join us. The monthly subscribers can join us uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern uh, just for you guys. And um, all of you all, YouTube, TikTok, Discord, etc., can join me on Discord. But I'm also going to try to set it up to do it on uh, YouTube as well this weekend. I've never done it before on YouTube at the same time. I'm not. I'm going to try to use a virtual camera and the whole deal. So let's see if I can pull it off. But I will try. Otherwise, the YouTube folks typically, I I, I have you guys go to Discord and do it. So the YouTube uh, subscribers. But since there's so many of you right now, YouTube Eclipse classes. I wish I was going to see the Eclipse. The problem is the Eclipse. I'm not going to be near it enough. But the Eclipse is happening like four days before I leave for Asia. So I didn't want to make another trip to go see the Eclipse for like 24 hours. Right, because then I'm going to Asia for my nephew's uh, wedding on that Friday. So I didn't want to like do the eclipse for two days, and it just it was too much trouble. But it bums me out though, because I am like a science nerd. So missing an eclipse like something like this, I'm like, oh, I I can't even. I can't even. Um, I'm not sure what that is, Deb. Is that a real thing? <laughs> the cherry tree, Stumpy. Is that a thing? Um, That's a wild question, Henry. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, guys, no other news here of the... Um... Hey, Mario. Thank you for that. Yeah, no other real news here other than Islamic State is claiming responsibility. And they're still saying officially it's 40 dead, but we all believe it's more now in this attack, in the terrorist attack in Moscow. Um, yeah, nothing else. Nope. Nope. But a lot of people are bringing up the story. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you, Dale. A lot of people are bringing up the story of Putin dismissing U.S. warning of potential terrorist attack just three days ago. Thank you incredibly. Thank you, Dale. That's bad. That's very bad. Um, yeah, that's not good. Oh, well. Anyway, all right, guys, I think we got it. You know what? Let me do the summary. We got, we've been going almost an hour and a half. Um, we will do the quick news summary and then call it a night. Um, tomorrow, remember, like I said, doing the, for anybody who's a subscriber, so subscribers, thank you, and please do join us. Actually, make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, make sure I didn't miss anything on YouTube. Sorry, I was looking at my notes here. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, sorry, real quick. Oh, yeah, Ben and Charles. I think I thanked you, didn't I? I'm hoping I thanked you, Charles. Yes, I did. I thanked you. Okay, appreciate that. Um, all right, yeah, let me do the quick summary of the news and then we will call it quits for tonight. All right, guys? Um, all right, uh, today's day 756 of Putin's special three-day military operation. Uh, we just talked about the terrorist attack in Moscow against a shopping center. ISIS has claimed credit. Um, although a lot of what we talked about was that terrorist attack, so I'm trying to just like look through this briefly. Um, just before the attack, the Russians finally started referring to the war in Ukraine as a war, which is kind of interesting. Thank you, Felicia. Um, another night of massive Russian missile strikes in Ukraine. Russia launched over 60 Shahid drones and nearly 90 missiles against the Ukrainians, um, taking out their power, basically going after a hydroelectric dam, among other things. Uh, then I talked about this Financial Times story that's very disturbing that the Biden administration reportedly told the Ukrainians to stop attacking Russian oil installations because it might increase oil prices before the U.S. election, which a lot of experts don't think is true, and because the Russians might retaliate by going after oil pipelines serving the West, which, again, a lot of people got kind of upset and were like, you know, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be telling a poor country <laughs> that is trying to literally you know, fighting for its literal survival, who it can and can't or what it can and can't hit, especially when the Russians have been nonstop going after Ukrainian energy facilities. Um, a top Ukrainian, oh, I didn't mention this, a top Ukrainian military official claims Russia is preparing 100,000 troops who could be used for a possible new offensive this summer or 
it is also possible they will use them just to replenish the troops that they've already got that are basically tired. So it's not, a, even if Russia is building up these 100,000 new men, it's not clear that they would use them for a new offensive. I mean, that, that's the good news. Uh, Poland, F Polish Foreign Minister Sikorsky says that if the U.S. supplemental for Ukraine does not go through, some allies will start hedging and others will start considering developing their own nuclear weapons. And I do think that's a risk overall of nuclear proliferation, that the war in Ukraine is basically telling folks, you know, if you don't have nukes, you're, you know, it, it, you're, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? More at risk, basically. Um, the first 10 Ukrainian pilots graduated from the flight school under the guidance of the Royal Air Force. And the UK has announced a further 60 million pounds or $75 million in military aid for Ukraine that will provide new surveillance drones and air defense systems. God bless the UK. Um, and there you go. Thank you, Denise. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you, Kirk. All right, guys, um, let's, call it a, let's call it a night. Thank you very much, guys, as always, for the gifts. And they, I saw several new subscribers today and a number of you, uh, Ben, I think, among others, maybe got some gift, uh, gift, certificate, gift certificates, gift subscriptions as well for folks. So thank you for that. Daniel, that's fine. You know, that's the nice part about my podcast, about my broadcast. We don't throw you in jail for that. So, um, so there we go. All right, guys. Um, yeah, let's call it a night. So thank you. We've been doing this an hour and a half. I will see you guys on Monday, 6 o'clock. Oh, boy. Okay. you. It's Monday, 6 o'clock Eastern time, U.S. And otherwise, join me tomorrow morning if you are a monthly subscriber on TikTok or YouTube, 11 a.m. Eastern time, U.S. I will be live. Vlad may or may not be with us tomorrow, just so you know, uh, because Vlad is in uh, Kharkiv dealing with a lot of family business for the next day or two. Thank you, Ava. So... He was there today, which makes me think he's not going to be back in time for the show tomorrow. So let's see. There's always, knowing Vlad, there's always a chance he could, he could beam in, you know, from the car or something. Who knows? Sasha is around. She's not being as, uh, as I gave her a lot of water before the show. <laughs> so she's not being as needy, Annette. It, it's, you know, maybe uh, she's being a little better tonight. Yes. Surprisingly, because because by this point, she not only wants water, she wants me to brush her teeth because my dog, because she gets a treat afterwards. So she's kind of big on the, uh, she usually bothers us at this point. So, all right. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Annette. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. Um, oh, you're waiting a refuge from Ukraine. She's stuck at the border to Poland. No, where are you? Just curious. Where are you, Nemo? That you're, that you're doing, just curious that you're doing that. Somewhere in Europe, I'm assuming, or somewhere nearby? You don't think of like Denmark. Oh, okay. You know, it's funny. You don't think of, um, so now my allergies are finally bothering me. You don't think of new, uh, I don't think of new Ukrainian refugees. You know, you, I sort of think of the refugees being the people who are already there, you know, who have already sought refuge, right? I don't think of it as new people seeking refuge, which is interesting. Um, you know? So, I mean, which is sad, but of course, true, because people are still getting bombed. They're still losing their businesses, losing their jobs, having to move out, right? So it makes sense, but, you know, and as the Russians advance slowly, more people moving out, but yeah, yeah. Still coming to Denmark? Not that many. That's interesting. That's interesting. Some have returned. That's interesting too, George. Huh. Um, you know, well, let's hope, you know. All right, guys. Uh, have a good night. As I said, I will see a bunch of you guys tomorrow. Oh, and don't forget uh, any of the $25 subscribers, which are not TikTok because TikTok only has one level, but any of the $25 subscribers, $24.99 on YouTube, Twitch, Discord, Kofi, I'm doing a Sunday show once a month for you guys as a thank you. So there's only a couple of people signed up, but join us Sunday. We'll wait, we just hang out. It's, but it's a fun time to hang out. You know, I have my camera on and audio. You guys type and we just talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, so, and there's Sasha, of course, I'll try to, I'll try to have Sasha make a, how do you subscribe, George? There should be folks help him out. Is there a dollar sign or no, there's a star on the screen, maybe at the top that you touch. Well, 11 AM Sunday is for the 2499 subscribers. So that would be discord, Twitch, YouTube, et cetera, who are 2499. The regular TikTok subscribers is tomorrow morning at 11 AM Eastern time. Yeah. So, uh, George, was it? I think, yeah, you can you can click the star on the top or bottom next to the comment box. There you go. Well, I'll hang a second since you're doing that because if I, as soon as I stop going live, it'll disappear on you. So I don't want to, I think it'll disappear on you. Um, 
I think it'll disappear on you. Do I think there will be a third world war? I think we're closer. Um, the thing I tell people, and I mean this in a good way, is I think we're back to where we were with the Soviet Union. The R Russia acts like the Soviet Union and thinks in many ways like the Soviet Union. I think we are facing the same threat that we had then. I did not think during the Soviet era that we were on the verge of war, right? Although a couple times we were. Um, but we were certainly at a heightened risk of war. And I think that's that's happening too. Well, you can you can go to my link and subscribe to the other services is what Ash is saying. So you could go to YouTube and subscribe to the membership there. You can go to some of the other services and do it there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for TikTok, you have to do it here. Oh, you know what? Y'all should actually, you know, the other way? I always forget. The other way to subscribe on TikTok is just going to my profile. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Was it? No, don't even go to the Linktree link. Go to my profile on TikTok. And there was a link that says subscribe, I think. Subscribe or membership or something, right? Um, morals, um, I don't know. What did you do? I don't think you got banned on Discord. I think we'd know. I think we'd know. Are you sure you uh, verified your account? If you don't verify your account, you're not able to do anything. When you go there, you've got to read the readme and read through everything it tells you. And there's a button to click at the bottom. So my guess is you probably didn't verify yourself um, because we don't ban anybody on the, the Discord. Literally, you've got to be a crazy person to get banded on the, banned on the Discord because the Discord is very calm. Like we never have, we very rarely have fights or anything on the Discord. I mean, not that we have fights here, but this is, TikTok is a much wider audience, so to speak, <laughs> right? Um, we don't get any of that on Discord. So... I doubt you got banned, especially if you don't know why, then I doubt that's the case. I think I think um, you need to go to the README section and you need to make sure you scroll down and click the verify button that's at the bottom. And if it still is not working, look for the help section. There's a help section where you can leave a message for me and for Syndicate, who's our tech guy, and he can help too. Yeah, but the TikTok, TikTok, TikTok's a fun mix, but TikTok's, we, we get the trolls and stuff is my point on TikTok. It's a livelier mix. You know, knock on wood, we don't get the trolls elsewhere as much, but ha <laughs> knock on wood. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thank you all so much. All right. Have a good night. And I'll see some of you tomorrow, some of you on Sunday and the rest of you Monday. All right. Thank you, flower lady. All right. You guys there. Thank you.